Hello everybody and welcome to the NPTEL online course on microelectronics devices circuits. We start today's module uh, which is named as frequency response of uh, common collector and source follower. So, two configurations we will be taking up today uh, as far as this module is concerned. Uh, in our previous module, we have looked into common emitter configuration design as well as uh, common source uh, design when you do a CMOS configuration and we try to find out the high frequency plots from that using a Bode's plot. Uh, we also saw that uh, at high frequency there is a degradation in the characteristics and that is because of the coupling capacitance. We also saw that uh, there is a limit or there is a uh, 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 sort of a, a marker and that is basically a 3 dB uh, crossover point where the gain falls by 3 dB and at that particular point you will have a crossover between a mid frequency and high frequency range. Uh, after that we do have a 20 dB per decade drop in your gain and that is what we have learned throughout our uh, understanding. In our previous uh, section we also have seen the concept of Miller capacitance is being used quite often. So, today I will take up a bit of understanding of what is Miller capacitance is and then uh, we will follow the frequency response of common collector and source follower technique. So, the, the, the outline of this uh, uh, module is that we will do an emitter follower and then we will do a source follower both at high frequency region. So, we already know uh, what these amplifiers are. For example, source follower we know has got a gain of 1 and uh, typically you take the output from the source of the amplifier and you give input to the gate side and typically the source follows the uh, the source output follows the uh, gate output and therefore, it is also referred to as a source follower and that is the reason it is also referred to as source follower and then we will recapitulate. But before we move to the this, this, this portion of the talk where we talk of high frequency response of common collector, let me explain to you as I had promised earlier uh, the concept of Miller capacitances because it is a quite an important uh, important issue uh, which you will be facing time and again when we will be doing uh, analog design and uh, Miller capacitance is one of the most uh, important capacitances which comes into picture because of uh, because of uh, uh, because of uh, uh, open loop gain of the system. Now, the problem is that the Miller capacitances has got a problem in the sense that if you want to increase the gain open loop gain of the system, uh, you end up having also a larger Miller capacitances. So, optimization is a very important fact. So, we will take up Miller capacitance from the point of view of a let us suppose a common emitter based BJT in a voltage divider technique or a voltage divider network. So, if I plot that graph of voltage divider, it looks something like this and then common emitter if we take up then we come to this and then we have this right and this is R1, R2 and let us suppose you have got RS here and you are taking an output from here and you have a blocking capacitor here and this is R1, R2 and this is RE and this is your RD. This is your common emitter based circuit and you have uh, and you will have obviously resistance here as well as an input signal which you so you have biased it properly in the active region and then give an input signal which is basically sinusoidal in nature uh, to this base signal and we will see uh, we will will see its uh, its uh, small signal analysis and we will see how it small signal analysis can be uh, can be done. Uh, to do that, uh, so we say that we do have a uh, equivalent circuit model and this is also known as a pi uh, circuit pi circuit equivalent equivalent right and uh, so we will do a pi circuit equivalent and therefore we will see this to be as rb we will refer to this as rb base resistance followed by r pi r pi and across it you will find v pi which is actually the input resistance and then you have got C mu and you have got pi mu or C pi and then I will explain these terms to you just now and this will be G m times V pi right and then you have got R C here which is the collector resistance followed by the external load resistance. This is R L and this is your V out right. 
So, uh, we are at this stage uh, looking into the fact that uh, uh, just for practical purposes do like this and then this is your RB. Now, RB is basically your base resistance which is nothing but parallel combination of R in parallel and R2, right? And small r is the uh, effective resistance between collector and the and the emitter side of the circuitry. Now you see uh, V pi is basically the voltage which appears across the base terminal of the uh, BJT in a common emitter configuration. And uh, who is responsible for giving that? That that who, uh, RB is responsible for for finding the value of voltage across the two ends, right? And it also depends upon the value of R pi which you see. C pi is basically the capacitance seen at this stage between base and emitter, right? Because that will be a, there will be a depletion capacitance as well as a diffusion capacitance, and those if you add up have to be C pi. What is more important at this stage is we should know what is C mu, right? C mu is basically the capacitance. Uh, which you see, uh, which is basically a feedback capacitances, uh, which is which which connects the input port to the output port of a uh, two port network, especially a BJT here. GM times V pi is nothing but because BJT is a current controlled uh, uh, is a device, and uh, therefore uh, GM times V pi gives you the current flowing through the BJT. RC is the collector resistance, and RL is the load resistance uh, for all practical purposes. Now, uh, we will like to model the C mu, right? With this, is, this, is, this is where the Miller capacitance portion will be coming. We like to model this C mu here and let us see how we can actually do a C mu modeling uh, here in this case. Now, in this case, we can model C mu as a two port, two port network and we will see how a two port network can actually work out and give me a result uh, in this case. So, I have got C mu here and I have got current I1 here and current I2 go both going into the black box and we have got V pi is the input voltage here and V naught as the output voltage. So, basically a two port network as we have already you must have already done in your network theory classes and you have got C mu. Now, I can do an IV relationship knowing that uh, the effective impedance available to you is basically 1 by j omega C mu, right. So, X C mu X C mu will be equals to 1 by j omega C mu right and that is what you will be what we will be writing now as far as this is this is concerned. So, we can write down uh, V of pi to be equals to I 1 into 1 by j omega C mu plus V 0 and we can also write down V 0 to be equals to I 2 right 1 by j omega C mu plus V pi. So, you can see uh, if you if you look very carefully 1 by j omega c mu is nothing but x c. So, this is nothing but x c this is x c. So, x c multiplied by i 1 is the voltage drop across the uh, across the reactive capacitance which is x c here right and we define i s c which is basically the current flowing because of c mu to be equals to v pi divided by 1 by j omega c mu right where V pi is the input voltage which is visible to the device right. So, with this two networks or with these two uh, two port network uh, the uh, we can draw the Norton equivalent circuit and we get something like this we have got C mu here uh, this will be a voltage source right a voltage source V 0 which is given by voltage source here this is equals to your C mu and then on the side we have got I S C right. ISC the current source because of the voltage source V0 and uh, parallel to this you will have of course C mu right and then you will have V0 here and this is your V pi V pi here and you have got ISC which is basically the uh, current source. So, this is basically my my Norton equivalent circuit. Uh, for the common uh, common emitter based configuration. And as a result you see this overall profile which you see in front of you. If you look at this overall profile here and then uh, if I assume that uh, if I assume that uh, uh, if this is true which you see uh, then uh, I can safely write down then I can safely write down that omega times C mu multiplied by V pi is nothing but equals to G m times V pi because both of the currents right omega times 
c mu into uh, into into v pi is nothing but v pi by x c. So, this this whole thing is basically your uh, v pi by x c, x c is the reactive capacitance which gives you the current and that must be also equals to g m times v pi where v pi is the input voltage uh, with you. Therefore, if you look very carefully and uh, this will be 2 pi f. So, v pi v pi will get cancelled out and f will be equals to g m upon 2 pi times c mu right. Now, if you put a typical value of g m and c mu this comes out to be approximately 160, 160 gigahertz right this is 160 gigahertz. Now, there, here comes the problem that therefore, BJT obviously cannot work at 160 gigahertz because it is a very very large frequency which is seen to you and therefore, it cannot work in such a large uh, region of operation or range of operation. So, uh, uh, so what we what we should do the, what we should do is we need to therefore, find out uh, what is the condition under which 1 by omega c mu is equals to R c parallel R L which means that the effective capacitive reactance and the uh, 1 upon that of course, 1 upon uh, j omega c uh, and the resistive pure resistive network when they exactly become equal to each other we say that uh, that is the point where you would have achieved the stability right. Under such a criteria uh, we see that uh, 1 by omega times c mu equals to r c parallel to r l or f equals to 1 by 2 pi c mu into R c parallel R l right. This is the frequency of operation of the carbon emitter based B j t and if you put up appropriate values of R c R l and c mu I get this to be approximately equals to 1.60 uh, gigahertz. So, we have we have drastically reduced the uh, frequency of operation from 160 to 1.60 about 100 times decrease has been there in terms of the operating frequency. Uh, this this can happen uh, provided c of mu is much larger as compared to r c parallel r l right. So, you have to ensure that the capacitive reactance of the device is much much larger as compared to r c parallel r l right. And therefore, I can safely assume that if c c if c c mu is basically an open circuit therefore right. Why? Because it is much much larger as compared to r c parallel r l and therefore, it is open circuit and therefore, if I draw the effective circuit diagram. I get something like this and this is a V 0, this is C mu and then you have got C pi right and then this goes to the input side and in the output side you have got G m times V pi, V pi and then you have got a resistance R l and this is the output voltage V 0. So, and this is your V pi right and uh, from here and the, this is the current I which is flowing through the device I 1 then I can safely write down I 1 right I 1 to be equals to V pi minus V 0 divided by 1 over j omega c mu because that is what we get it must be equals to j omega c mu into V pi minus V 0. This will go up and you get j omega c mu into V pi minus V mu. We also know therefore, that V 0 is equals to minus g m times v pi which is equal in, in to g m times v pi multiplied by r c parallel r l right. And therefore, I can write down the current i to be equals to j omega c mu right into 1 plus g m times r c parallel r l right into v pi right. And therefore, you see uh, c, c mu which was initially the effective capacitance seen is actually getting translated into a slightly larger value of capacitance and is this is basically my C m or the Miller capacitance and is given as C mu into 1 plus G m times R c parallel R l fine. So, this is your C m which you get this is your C m. Uh, is equals to C mu into 1 plus G m times R c parallel R l. And if you look very carefully this is nothing but the voltage gain and therefore, I can write down Miller capacitance is C m C mu equals to 1 plus A v A v A v mod of that right. And this is what is known as the Miller 
Miller cap multiplier, right? So this is a Miller cap multiplier, uh, which uh, occurs, uh, which 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 occurs because you do have some gain, open loop gain of the system, which gets multiplied with C mu, and that appears in the output side as C, as 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 C m, right? This uh, this this component is basically therefore known as the Miller Miller component. So, what is the Miller component in a BJT or a CMOS? It basically is the component of capacitances which connects between the input and output and raises the value of voltage in the output side beyond a particular limit, right? And that is what is known as a Miller capacitances. Let me therefore give you a physical reasoning behind this one. So, let us suppose I have got an input and output, right? And my uh, my input is is given by the small v pi. This is v pi, right? This is my input v pi. Uh, my output will be obviously 180 degree phase shifted, but highly amplified, and therefore I get this as my v out. This is my v out. This is my v in, and this is my v out. And this difference, let us suppose we refer to this as v c or the voltage uh, across the capacitance c. I can safely write down. I C to be equals to right C of mu right D of V C D T right. We all can also write down I C to be equals to J omega C mu into V C as we have discussed just now. I C is also equals to C M times D of V pi D T. So, if you equate these two together, I get C mu times V C equals to C m times V pi, right. Now, we already know that V pi is much much larger as compared to V c, right as compared to V c and therefore, C m, right will be uh, obviously, uh, so, so sorry V sorry uh, v, v this is true that V m is much much smaller as compared to V c and therefore, my C m will be much larger as compared to C pi. And that is true also because C m is nothing but C mu into 1 plus G m times R 1 into R 2 or R 1 parallel to R 2 right. And you get the overall Miller capacitance is available to me depending on the value of your uh, feedback uh, capacitance. This is the basic criteria or a basic concept of a, a Miller capacitance and uh, uh, as we have seen just now that a Miller capacitance gives you a enhanced value of your this thing. Uh, of the output, but then you see as I discussed with you C m will be equals to C mu into 1 plus G m times R l prime. So, if you want to increase the gain or the bandwidth and you want the G m to be large, you also end up having a larger C m. A larger C m implies that your speeds will be restricted drastically and therefore, you have to do a, a sort of a, a, a manipulation or sort of a optimization between input and output in this case right and they have to make it make them look such that they are almost equal to each other. So, this is basically your gain and it is also written as C mu into 1 plus mod of A v right and this is equals to C m. This is also referred to as base to collector gain right. So, this base, base to collector gain which you see as A v and this gain is typically of the order of few 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6 depending upon the type of op amp which has been chosen in this case. With this knowledge uh, we have understood what is a Miller capacitance, what is the origin of a Miller capacitance and how a Miller capacitance is related uh, to the overall capacitance of the system. Let me switch back to this today's course and explain to you how it works out. For example, if you are doing a common collector or an emitter follower. Uh, design emitter follower design, then this is what it looks like that on the on the on the on the emitted side you have the current source and the collector is connected to VCC and the signal is inserted to the base side of the BJT. If you plot its equivalent circuit diagram, it looks like something like this. So, G m times V pi is nothing but the device itself. So, this is the device itself, right? Who is surrounding the devices? The collector end is connected to R0, which is basically an open circuit resistance value you will have uh, C mu and C pi as the resistance between base and collector, base and collector. So, between base and collector you will have C mu and between 
base and emitter base and emitter you will always have what is known as uh, uh, r pi and c c pi and r pi fine and this uh, makes our life difficult in the sense that these capacitances becomes higher and higher at enhanced values of operation or the resistance of the device so r0 is basically my output resistance of the device rl is the load resistance rx and r sig are the input resistance seen by the device when the device is operating in the saturation region right so uh, so if you go back to your previous discussion uh, what i was doing was that c mu if you see here carefully has been removed so there's no there's no c mu, c mu. and the reason is that uh, at such a high so so when you are so you remember the 1 upon j omega so when your frequencies are 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 relatively very large then these are actually uh, almost equals to zero and therefore they can be shorted and therefore the capacitors have been shorted uh, at least the semi capacitor has been shorted and we get this uh, picture here which you see in front of you where v sig is the applied signal voltage and c mu is the applied uh, capacitance and c of pi is basically the pi value or the uh, input capacitance of the system gm times v pi is nothing but the current which is flowing through the device because it's basically a current control device so i get r sig prime r sig prime to be equals to r sig plus uh, rx right and rl prime is equals to rl parallel to r0 right rl prime equals to rl rl is the load capacitance seen from the outside world and r0 is the output impedance of the device so if you if you if you do a small kirchhoff's law solution then i get gn times v pi which is nothing but the current must be equals to v pi by r pi again the current must be equals to z c pi v pi and this all must be equals to zero so the net current should be equals to zero because before also the current was equals to zero from there i get omega z equals to 1 by c pi i re right and therefore i can write down f to be equals to 1 by 2 pi c pi r e right similarly we can write down s z as z to be gm plus 1 by r pi upon c c pi is equals to 1 minus 1 by c pi times re this is the value of sz and similarly r pi which is basically the resistance offered by the uh, by the other resistances is given by this formula where r sig prime plus rl prime upon 1 plus r sig prime by r pi plus rl prime by re so if you look at r sig is basically nothing but the signal resistance offered by the signal to the device itself right so if you plot this graph or if you try to find it out i get fh equals to 1 by 2 pi c mu r mu plus c pi r pi right and this is what a very important result which we get that the that the holding frequency or the frequency where you are holding the mid frequency gain is basically determined by the capacitances at resistances of the device itself right and that gives me a quite an interesting result uh, as far as uh, designing is concerned now if i do a so we are finished with common uh, common collector let me do a source follower as i discussed with you source follower if you look very carefully you are actually extracting the voltage from the source itself so this is your v out here right and you are extracting it from the source similarly if you look very carefully here rgd is equals to r sig right rgd is gate to drain gate to drain is basically your r sig and rgs equals to r sig plus rl prime upon 1 plus uh, gm times rl prime right rl prime this is, these are all primes here which you see uh, and from here i get rcl to be equals to rcl to be equals to rl parallel to r0 parallel to 1 by gm right and therefore your fh happens to be all the combinations of rgd rcgs and uh, cl load capacitances so in a source follower technique or in a, in a high frequency source follower technique uh, the resistances offered by the gate to drain overlap and gate to says overlap makes a makes a quite a lot uh, difficult calculating the value of the uh, frequency fh right and that is a quite an interesting task so if i just break it down into a smaller piece here and show it to you then i get r sig into r sig uh, r sig into v sig right into cgd so this is my gate terminal here and i have got cgd and this goes via the source side to the drain side so this is your source and drain and this is the collector drain current which is flowing through the device given by gm times vgs right 
so if you see and if you see the plot between these two they are exactly the same the only thing is that this V sig has been replaced by V G S and it is placed in the input side of the of the, of the design and uh, G M times V G S is the amount of current which is flowing in the output side. So, if you make your V G S large this also becomes large so that the same current is flowing through both the arms of the device and R L is the, uh, the tail current source uh, resistance which is being offered by the device itself. So, let me recapitulate what we did uh, till now and uh, let me show to you how it works out. Uh, if you look very carefully both have voltage gain less than unity, both common collector and source follower have a lecture gain which is quite less than unity. Uh, obviously, the advantage of this uh, common collector and source follower is that it has got typically very high input impedance and uh, low output impedance and therefore, matching of signals can be done very well uh, using this uh, technique uh, using this either CC or SF. Uh, similarly, CC or SF are also used as a final stage of a multi stage amplifier right and uh, emitter follower has got a very wide band gap or a bandwidth circuit in reality. So, it is a quite a large bandwidth by which it works fine and gives me a very good result as far as uh, designing is concerned uh, in, in terms of both uh, the system design as well as for the design available to us uh, through an overall network of things right. And so, this is this takes care of our approximately most of the understanding part of our uh, of the of the common of the common collector and source follower technique. So, we have seen that the common collector and source follower both have voltage gain less than 1 because the gain is very small, but they are very good impedance matchers because their impedance is dependent on the uh, input and output profile. Uh, the advantage is that uh, both have the high input impedance and very low output impedance and uh, these impedances can be changed by varying certain input parameters. Uh, generally, these CC and SF are used as the final stage of a multi stage amplifier. So, typically if you are using a multi stage amplifier say 2 stage or 3 stage then the last stage will be primarily your CC or SF where you get a unity gain, but your impedance are properly matched between input and uh, input and output. Uh, emitter follower is basically a very wide band gap circuit uh, not only this which gives me a very typically large bandwidth. Uh, to a larger extent. The cost I pay for it is basically that though its bandwidth is large uh, your gain is re relatively small it is almost unity gain which we see and therefore, the price we pay for a larger bandwidth is a lower gain right and that is a, a important uh, drawback of this uh, CCNSF. So, let me recapitulate what we did today I explained to you what a what is a Miller capacitance is and how Miller capacitances play an important role as far as determining the uh, the mid frequency gain is concerned. Uh, we also saw that the if you have Miller multiplier factor the output capacitance will actually be multiplied by a factor of 1 plus G m times R d which is basically my A v and will appear in the output side that makes my life difficult. And thirdly is that if I want to therefore, make my uh, capacitance small I also end up having reducing my the gain of gain of the mid mid frequency gain of the amplifier right. Subsequently, we looked into the common collector and source follower technique and we saw the various principles and uh, formulas used for, for doing that. Uh, where, where these will be used we also saw that and uh, where what will be the voltage gain for common collector and source follower technique. This we have followed in this module. I thank you for your patient hearing.